the U.S. Attorney for the Northern District. He's kind of bookended that job in between serving a stint in the West Virginia legislature, Bill Elenfeld. Bill, good morning to you. Welcome back to the show. Good morning, Rob. Happy West Virginia Day to you and Matt and John. Thank you, sir. Bill, what do you think uh, in the in the wheeling area? What's the average speed going up and down seventy <laughs> or seventy nine? What do you think? <laughs> uh, people go pretty fast around here. Uh, however, all of the construction that's been happening ha- has slowed people down. Um, so I, I don't know if that's I, that's probably a good thing. It's probably safer, and we're mm-hmm. making progress in getting all the roads and bridges repaired. But um, uh, it's it's not as bad as other places. I just took a road trip to Minnesota to see my daughter, and I had to go in and around Chicago, and it was five wide, and cars were just it was like a NASCAR race out there. So um, I, I guess it could be worse. Yeah, I've driven around Chicago on the Dan Ryan Expressway. That's an expressway that's misnamed. Because, <laughs> like, I don't know, this, I haven't done it in 20 years, but you drive around Chicago and then you have to stop every so many miles to throw a quarter in the basket back then. I guess this was before Easy Pass, somewhere around 2001 or so. And I always thought to myself, why would you put a toll booth right in the middle of a perfectly good working lane of interstate traffic? It didn't make any sense to me. Uh, Bill, let's talk about your editorial, the op-ed that you have uh, written regarding elder financial exploitation. I understand that uh, you and Mr. Harvey are very familiar with this specific topic. What's the scenario by uh, which you were um, you made the decision to write this op-ed? Well, it wasn't really just one case, although I focus on a particular case out of Jefferson County in the op-ed. It's really the, the issue as a whole. Uh, in my role, I have the opportunity to see um, a lot of reports that um, that come in related to suspicious activity and uh, and drilling down even more suspicious elder financial related activity. And it's trending upward. That's just not what I'm seeing in the Northern District of West Virginia, but um, there are other uh, institutions that gather data to include the United States Treasury Department that show this is a a, a trending upward in West Virginia and across the country. We had about $3 billion in in theft uh, across America last year related to this topic, and then about $27 billion in suspicious activity related to it. So my my inspiration was to um, to write to write about the topic was because it's it's becoming uh, more and more of a problem in West Virginia. We've got one of the oldest populations in in America. We have about 375,000 people in the state who are 65 or older. So uh, it's it's only going to uh, continue to be an issue for us. And so I wanted to get out in front of it and try to uh, raise awareness and hopefully prevent some people from becoming victims. What recommendations are you making, Bill? Uh, so the, the the list is long. I'll, I'll try to give you the the best uh, my, my my top five or so recommendations. Uh, n- number one would be to resist the pressure to act quickly. Um, in in these stranger scams, uh, these these scams uh, that are being uh, perpetrated by people you don't know, people you've met online, maybe you think you know them, but these are people you haven't otherwise uh, encountered in your life. They um, uh, one one very common tactic is to put pressure on you to act quickly, to to insist that you get them the money today or uh, or um, you know tomorrow. You know that that they they need to have it now if you're going to receive your lottery winnings or whatever the the scam of the day may be. And so it's important to stop, take a breath, call someone you trust uh, before you make a, a decision like that. Uh, I, I talk to bank officials and credit union officials on a regular basis about this topic. And they deal with customers who come in on a regular basis, insisting that they need to withdraw money. Uh, and then sometimes the customers will say what they're going to do with the money. And, and sometimes it's going to another country or going to a place that just doesn't seem um, to be legitimate to the bank official. And the bank official will, will all, they, they always caution their customers um, about that kind of a thing because it, it raises flags on their end. But at the end of the day, it's the customer's money and the customer can do what they want with their money. So so number one would be to resist the pressure to act quickly. Uh, number two would be never to send money to anyone that you've only met online. Um, 
in regard to uh, keeping uh, your your computer and your your electronic devices safe, don't click on links uh, that you didn't expect to have sent to you. That could uh, expose your devices to malware and allow someone to access your um, your banking information and other personally identifiable information that might allow someone to steal your identity and 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 steal your money. Um, and be very careful with powers of attorney. Um, that's what happened in the case that I, I talk about in the op-ed, uh, where a power of attorney was was given to someone who then took full advantage of it and emptied our victims' bank accounts and investment accounts and sold real estate. That situation was a little bit different in that uh, our victim had uh, declining cognitive abilities and, and and probably didn't know what he was signing at the time he executed that power of attorney. But uh, a power of attorney is an important document for, for all of us, uh, but be careful with that. And if you're just looking for someone to help pay your bills, uh, have a power of attorney that just does that. Uh, don't give unlimited authority in a power of attorney. Um, or if you do, just know that you're basically allowing that person to stand in your shoes and do whatever you can do with that document. It's It's been uh, – we have case after case where a, a power of attorney is abused and you just have to be careful with uh, who you give that power to. Make sure that you trust them, um, and uh, and and if you need to restrict the uh, ability of that power of attorney, you can do that. A lawyer can can narrowly draft a power of attorney so that uh, the power is is more limited. Thank you, Bill. And by the way, this reminds me of something I wanted to bring to everybody's attention as well. And so you probably get this text on your phone if you're going to get it, but uh, there is a, a scam. Uh, Sun Pass is what it is, and they're going to send you a link that says you went through a uh, toll area without paying, and just click on this link and make your payment. And if you do, you're going to get malware on your phone, and they're going to try to collect your financial information to make the payment. They're going to steal that and milk you for as much money as they can, so don't do it. If you get something like this on your phone, uh, email that you went through a toll booth or something without paying, don't click on the links, folks, because that's a scam. And a good way to find out is input that into your computer and search it. Is this a scam? And it'll come up and tell you whether or not it's a scam or not. Mr. Harvey. Hey, good morning, Bill. Good morning, Matt. This is a great talk, uh, topic. I'm, I'm glad that you're you know taking the front on getting this issue out in front of people and making them more aware. Um, you know, I've noticed that, that th this is tricky because – there's not a cavalry coming in a lot of instances. Like there's not a there's not a, a, a policing agency that's out just looking for elder abuse. Um, these referrals are ultimately coming from bank tellers uh, or other family members. That that's right. Uh, there we we have um, we have some FBI agents that work on it. We have um, state police that work on it. We have IRS CI that work on it. Um, but uh, one of the biggest challenges we face, uh, in, you know, we've got two categories. We've got the stranger scams, and then we have what I call insider threats. Uh, the number one perpetrator in that insider threat category are relatives. You know, we've got sons and daughters uh, and nieces and nephews who are, are stealing from their loved ones. The number two in that category are in-home caregivers, nurses, aides, and rehab workers, and people that come into the homes to take care of older West Virginians. And so it, it makes it even more difficult when you have people who really should be looking out for our, our elderly folks uh, who are taking advantage of the situation. So it, add into the mix uh, the cognitive decline of older people, uh, which is, is something that, that happens to a lot of us, and it makes for a, an incredibly challenging situation and um, and so uh, we need to talk about it more. We need to make sure that friends and neighbors are aware of this. We need to continue to engage with our banking officials. We just had a conference last week statewide to uh, engage again with the people who are on the front lines. They can do a lot to stop this from happening. But uh, one thing that the Treasury Department found in its recent report was that our, our bad guys are, are more and more trying to stay away from bank officials and trying to do things outside of, of banking institutions and do things on, on payment apps and you know, uh, moving people over to devices and, and, and platforms where you're not going to have a, any, any sort of human intervention. So uh, that's a long way of saying this is a very challenging 
uh, issue for all prosecutors and law enforcement to deal with. And uh, and so we need to talk about it more, shine a bright light on it, and, and try to prevent people from becoming victims. William Whittington just posted on our Facebook page that the average victim of elder fraud lost $33,915 due to these crimes in 2023. Mr. Gilstrap. Uh, good morning, Bill. <clears throat> John Gilstrap. Um, you know, it's interesting. My wife used to just re- last three months ago, I guess, got rid of her last client. She had a, a, a company that helped seniors deal with their finances and that kind of thing. And she ended up seeing it's the financial abuse isn't necessarily large scale. <clears throat> a lot of it is the home health care worker or the, the aide will get the uh, the seniors credit card and will go out and shop for the senior and while shopping just buy their own groceries too and they don't see any necessarily see anything wrong with that but you know that adds up over time so there somebody needs to and this is what my my wife would do somebody needs to stay on top of that because that is financial abuse especially when people don't have a, a lot of money to take care of this and uh and you take this population that is probably lonely to begin with and they don't and, and they don't want to make charges against the person that is their company during the day it's a pretty pernicious problem and and i don't it, it, the solution is is tough i would i, I would think it's it, I, I think people look at this as it's not just the organized theft you know somebody's taking thirty three thousand dollars away it doesn't happen that way necessarily it's two hundred dollars here and you know a buck fifty there it, it just adds up it does, and and when you look at the the insider threat, the in home caregivers or, or the relatives, it's not really very sophisticated. It, it's just what you said. It's it's using the victim's credit card or debit card, or it's it's forging their signature to a check, or or asking uh, the the victim to sign a check, or just simply um, getting into their bank account and transferring money from the victim's account to the perpetrator's account. It's not that complicated. On the other side, the stranger scams are a little more uh, sophisticated, and and you end up seeing more money. That's where the big money is is taken is that side. But it's more than just a financial loss. Uh, there's also uh, it, it can be traumatic, and, and as you said, John, you don't want to file charges against the person who keeps your company during the day. Um, so there's there's the whole um, you know mental health piece to this, and people. Uh, are lonely and, uh, and and so it all of those factors play into trying to find solutions to, to this problem and and I don't have a, a silver bullet here uh, this morning on West Virginia Day to give to everyone I just think it's important for us all to to talk about it and do everything we can to protect people and uh, it, it might might be uh, that what Rob said about not clicking on a link in a text message or an email you get that that prevents someone today from uh, making a mistake that uh, causes them to lose a lot of money and 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 suffer not only the financial loss but also the embarrassment and you know pe- people are embarrassed when they become victims to these things and and that's a whole nother piece to this issue that that we have to think about. You mentioned the embarrassed part, and I, I imagine a large part of this elder fraud goes unreported, Bill, just out of embarrassment, if nothing else. Absolutely, yeah, uh, especially if it's a romance scam, and and that is uh, number two on the list when you look at the national figures. Number one are the tech support scams, where someone says you've got a virus on your computer and 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 you need to. <laughs> They're going to help you fix it, and they end up taking a lot of money from you. But number two are the romance scams, and it is especially embarrassing when when you fall in love with someone you've met online, either through a dating platform or uh, some other way, and you think that they love you and and they don't really, and and then you end up getting – uh, end up giving them money. You get you get pulled into this. You end up investing with them because they they offer this this great in, investment opportunity. That happens on a regular basis. We've had people who have taken money out on uh, home equity uh, out of their home for things like this. We've had people that have filed false income tax returns um, it, because they they felt the pressure of someone that they had fallen in love with uh, in order to get the refund in order to turn the refund over to. Uh, the perpetrator. So, I mean, we we have people that are committing crimes, 
that really are victims, but they're committing crimes in order to satisfy the person they've met online. So it, it's embarrassing, and sometimes people end up uh, doing things that they they regret later on. Hey, Bill, could you speak about the case out of Jefferson County? I, I believe the listeners would be rather shocked at the amount. Of course. So this was a case of uh, an older man who uh, was a military veteran. He worked his whole life for the federal government. He saved his money. He invested it well. He bought some real estate. Uh, But uh, he he was pretty much living on his own and and was lonely. And and so he spent time at the American Legion uh, just to be able to be around other people. And there's an employee at the American Legion named Sam Bonner who befriended our victim and that's maybe uh, should be in air quotes but he he uh, began to uh, be nice to our victim to take him to doctor appointments uh through that uh he he quickly noticed that our victim was suffering from cognitive decline and and so then he took our victim to see an attorney he had a power of attorney uh, provided to him so so sam bonner had a power of attorney and he was able to access the victim's checking accounts, his investment account. Uh, he was able to sell real estate. And uh, the victim was pretty much helpless to do anything about it because of his, his mental status and the fact that he didn't have any family that was close by looking out for him. Um, his family was in other parts of the country. And, and ultimately, that's how the case broke was when a family member called and said, hey, I haven't been able to touch base with with my uh, my family member, I'm, I think something's wrong, and and that's how it was brought to the attention of law enforcement. But uh, in the end, uh, Sam Bunner and his wife together conspired to steal nearly two million dollars from our victim, uh, who um, w- w- was really unable to do much about it because of his mental status. Yeah, and it included selling real estate in Hawaii. Yes, it was. So let, let's put this in the form of an action plan. So if, if family members, especially go back to like the romance thing and the online, when, when a family member sees their, their parent or, or loved one or next door neighbor um, making these decisions, what can they do? I mean, can, you, can you call the police? Because they're not really breaking the law. What, what can they do to intervene? Right. So, no, it's not breaking the law. I mean, uh, a lot of times th- there's not a, a cognitive issue. It's just a, a, a loneliness issue, uh, a, a need for companionship kind of an issue. Um, so, uh, yes, you can call the police. Uh, you can call the U.S. Attorney's Office. You can call the Jefferson County Prosecutor's Office. We will, uh, if asked, we will contact. And, you know, of course, we, we need to know a little bit more about what what's happening. But have no problem at all contacting a victim or we've even had agents go to victims homes and and say hey uh, I'm, I'm with the fbi or i'm with the sheriff's department and we think you're being taken advantage of and we would strongly encourage you from discourage you from sending any more money to this person so we can do that um the the other thing and i've had calls about this as well to my office uh where there really is a, a, a an issue of um, concern about the, the mental status of the victim. Uh, there is a conservatorship and guardianship petition that can be filed in circuit court that Matt's familiar with, where you can basically take over control of someone's finances. Now that's um, you know, that that's a little more uh, complex, and you got to file a petition. You got to go before a circuit court judge and establish that this person no longer is capable of handling their own affairs. But that's uh, something else that that can be done. Um, you know, you certainly can offer to do everything that, you know, a, a child could offer to do for a parent, but sometimes they just don't want to listen or for, for a friend or a neighbor. Sometimes they just don't want to listen. Um, so it, it, it depends upon the situation. Bill, do many of these cases get prosecuted and in any cases, is the money recoverable? Uh, these cases do get prosecuted, uh, all the time. Uh, sometimes the money is recovered. Uh, other times the money has been spent on things like travel and, and, and items that can't be recovered. So in the Bunner case, they, they sold our victims real estate and bought their own real estate and they bought their own, uh, luxury automobiles and they bought, 
uh, luxury goods, uh, fancy purses and things like that. So we were able to seize uh, some of those items, seize the real estate, seize the vehicle, seize the purses. And now we're in the process of, of liquidating that and returning the money to the victim. Uh, we had a lottery scheme out of Harrison County, West Virginia, where the uh, lady was based in Las Vegas and she was scamming people all across the country, including in West Virginia. We went and served a search warrant on her home in Las Vegas. We were able to seize a Corvette and some other items. Uh, I would say at, at, at the end of the day, normally we're not recovering uh, everything. Um, we, we end up uh, typically we're short of being able to make a full recovery for a victim, but we do everything we can. If the if the perpetrator has acquired things with that money, then we're able to go and take that take those items back and and sell them and then uh, return the money to the victim. Bill, about a minute left. If you could address our elder population and their caregivers and give them some advice that will keep them from being scammed. So uh, this is what I would say to all, all older West Virginians. Um, one. Um, and reiterating what I said before, uh, resist the pressure to act quickly uh, and, and don't make a major financial decision without talking to someone that you you know and trust and love. You know, talk to talk to a loved one before you make that kind of a decision. Uh, if you get a call, a strange call um, that says you won the lottery or that says one of your children is in trouble or grandchildren has been arrested uh, and, and it causes you great concern. Uh, don't immediately believe that 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 has happened. Stop, uh, take a deep breath, and call call and, and verify. And then something I think you said earlier, Rob, uh, if you have this great opportunity or, or you, you're not sure if something is legitimate, do your own research. Use the Google machine. Uh, check it out. Uh, a lot of times you're going to find that someone else has been a victim of what it is that's being presented to you. And if you just do a little bit of research and look into it, uh, you might avoid making the same mistake the other person made. So so do your homework before you put your money into something that is brand new and, and maybe seems too good to be true. Bill Elenfeld, thank you so much for your time this morning. Always appreciate it. Thanks, gentlemen. See U.S. You, Attorney for the Northern District, uh, William Elenfeld. And we move to our uh, break here, brought to you in part by the Skinner Accident and Injury Attorneys by the Berkeley County Health Department and by Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies, fmiwv.com. One of the questions lawyers get asked the most is, what is my case worth? I'm Steven Skinner and this is my brother Andrew with Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers. 